getting a baby millipede in the mail, so I need to make a new little cage and mix up some substrate. So I'm going to show you today how I mix up my substrate for a millipede. This substrate is good for any decomposer that needs an organic substrate such as roaches and various beetles and centipedes. Um, if you're interested in the basic care of millipedes other than just how to mix the substrate. I have a video on millipede care. See the video description for the link to that. Alright, this is my cup I'm going to use. Like I said, it's a baby millipede. It's only going to be about this big. So I need something really small that I'm not going to lose it in and it has tiny, tiny holes. You probably can't even see these holes because they are so tiny. But this is just a basic beta cup from PetSmart. And then I just added more holes and made sure the center taped it down really good on the outside so it's not going to move for him. And since it's so tiny, it would definitely get out of the cage that I do have for my other millipedes. So this is going to be a really small scale video. But what I do is I like peat moss, specifically Canadian sphagnum peat moss is one of my favorites. And I use mostly this in my setup. I may need more than that then. Any kind of peat moss, you can find this at any garden center or plant nursery. Just make sure that it is not treated with pesticides or anything because obviously that will kill your pet insect. Also, I like to add some Eco Earth, which is a cocoa coconut fiber bedding commonly sold for reptiles. So you can find this at any pet store. You can buy it in bags like this. You can buy it in bricks. It also goes by the name Plantation Soil and Coconut Fiber and Coconut Husk and so many freaking names. But I like to put this in here. Some people use coconut fiber exclusively, but it, it is finer, but I don't personally think that it holds the moisture quite as well. Therefore, I'm only going to use about 50% sphagnum moss with 50% eco-earth. It is a different texture. You might be able to see from the layers. Eco-earth is on top, then the peat moss, and then try and mix this up in here. making a huge mess on my parents' table. They're not going to like that. And then what I do is, because as you know, um, for millipedes and centipedes, the substrate needs to be moist. Some people just spray it down. Personally, I love to take water. And this is water that once I poured it in here, I let it set for 24 hours with the cap off so that the chlorine would evaporate out of it. And I just like to use this dechlorinated water pour in and then I'm going to mix up. If you're wearing nail polish, remove it before you do this. You do not want to get any nail polish in your substrate that your pet's going to be living in because they'll eat this. Since the substrate is made of organic plant material, they will actually eat and decompose the soil as well. Keep in mind that when you do wet down the soil, it is going to expand. So what you started with is going to about double in size, give or take some. And you want to just mix it up, get it nice and thoroughly moist. You don't want to be able to mush water out of it. You don't want like standing puddles of water in there. That would be bad. But you do want to make sure you get it all mixed up and there aren't puddles on the bottom and Make sure you get the coconut fiber mixed in with the peat moss pretty thoroughly and it'll turn this nice dark color. With the peat moss, sometimes you'll get sticks basically. I take those out. You can leave them in, it's no big deal. We'll chomp on those too. I personally like to take them out because sometimes they can have sharp edges and can just be a pain in the butt. And I just mix this up by hand. 
Um, if you are wearing nail polish and you don't want to remove it, you can just wear gloves, like basic kitchen gloves. Make sure they haven't been used in chemicals before, chemicals prior to you wearing them because, again, that will kill your bugs or arthropods, depending on what it is you're keeping. But, yeah. This is nice and damp. You can see it's sticking to me, and I can't squeeze water out of it. There's no drips there. It's about what you want. I'm missing some on the bottom, though, here. It's really dry on the bottom. You want to make sure this is evenly mixed, not that, you know, you got spots where it's, like, really dry. That would be bad. So, I'm trying to get it the bottom here. This is like a small cup, but my cup, I was going to use the holes were way bigger than I remembered, and yeah. I'm just going to add a little bit more. That is the sound of my cup cracking. I don't see any visible cracks, so nothing to worry about. These are flimsy cups, though, so i got to be careful. We want it nice and damp. It'll turn this nice, rich, dark color, darker than it was. I can see, like, the coconut fibers, you know, fibrous mixed in along the sides, which is good. It's what you want. There we go. As you can see, that it's much darker than... I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but much darker now that it's wet than the coconut fiber was before. Alright. Try to clean up off the table here a little bit. The next thing that you're going to need, even though they will eat this soil, is they love leaves. They eat decom millipedes and centipedes and a lot of roaches and beetles. They eat decomposing matter. Leaves are one of the best. Um, I have some that are already crumpled up, and what I do is I just collect these from outside, and then I bake them in the oven at 250 degrees for 10 to 30 minutes. I prefer doing 20 because it's somewhere in the, you know, middle of the road, but I just use a tin foil disposable pan like this to put them in, and then I just rinse it out when I'm done. And when you're collecting these outside, you want to check the leaves for visible signs of life, if there's a caterpillar or something crawling on it, or there's a little, like, looks like a cocoon, you don't want to use it, just leave it there, brush them off. There's a certain other things that you want to look for that you don't want to use. And this leaf is a really good example. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can look at all the arrows. And I'll try to find a uh, picture link on Google that shows some of these things that are on these leaves. So, check the video description for that. But there are circles. They're little brown circles all over this thing. And they're not rays. They're just flat circles. But they're like a brownish tan with a dark ring around them and kind of a white center. Sometimes they're brown with a white ring around them. Anything like that. I don't use that. I'm not sure what it is. But... I just don't want to put that in with my pet. Another thing this has is this actually has, and you could feel this, actually has raised lumps on the leaf itself. And you might be able to see on the back here, raised lumps. And here they're like, a, the lumps are like a white or a green color, but they're, they're raised, which is really weird. You don't want to use that. If it's got raised lumps, like dots on it, you don't want to use it. If it's got these brownish, you know, the spots that have dark rings around them, you don't want to use that. Just leave it. Also, something I'm finding a lot this year, again, I'll try to find you a video example, but this brown portion down here in the leaf that the arrow is pointing to, actually you can see inside this brown portion, which is a scar, you can see the marking of a worm. So it looks like this little worm, and this is a type of parasitic worm that infects trees and feeds off of it. Even if, um, if you see this, if you see the marking of a worm, don't use the leaf. The worm may not be there anymore, but don't take the chance. Don't use it. 
leave it. I also try to find leaves that don't have a lot of places where something else is nibbled on it. Um, something else nibbling on them, you know, something's chomped at the leaf. It's no big deal. I try to avoid it if it's got a lot of chewing because A, you're using a lot of the leaf and B, you never know what could have been in the saliva of whatever it was that was chomping on it. Okay, now, you're probably wondering, so can I use any type of leaves that I find out there as long as they don't have bumps or images of worms or have been really munched on? No, you can't. Some leaves are poisonous. Most leaves that you're probably going to find in your public park or something are going to be fine. However, across the board from things I have read, millipedes prefer oak tree leaves which is a hard wood. You can use any kind of other hardwood tree such as walnut. And I actually have a walnut leaf. This is a walnut leaf. It's probably hard to see, but because it's all dry, I'm sorry. But this is a small walnut leaf. These leaves can get huge. These leaves can get as big as this, which you can see on my arm is almost the entire length of my arm. So walnut tree leaves get huge. And these leaves are kind of oblong. They have a, what's called a serrated edge. So instead of being smooth, it's kind of got corners on it. Really, really fine. Like, you can barely see it. But And the leaves are actually catty-corner to each other. They don't connect on the stem directly across from each other. So they go back and forth. So like one leaf is here and then the next one's down here versus one leaf here and then the other leaf right next to it on the side of the stem. Also the fruit of a walnut, you all know what a walnut is probably. You probably ate it on your cookies or cooked with it or watched someone in your family bake with, all, with walnuts. They do not look like what you buy in the store on the tree. A walnut is actually encased in this green fleshy material. So it's actually this green ball, usually about this big. Sometimes it's starting to get black and brown because once it falls, that outer casing rots away as the walnut seed finishes maturing. So if you see green like fruit type balls on it and the leaf kind of looks like this, it's definitely a walnut tree. Uh, walnut is a type of hardwood, so you can use that. Um, but they prefer oak. I have several types of oak leaves. This here is an oak leaf. Specifically, this is a pin oak. And almost all types of oaks have this very, very similar shape to them. It doesn't matter what species of oak you use. You can use any species of oak as long as it's oak. Across the board, people who have ever owned millipede seem to have seemed to find that it seems to be their preferred type of leaf over everything. But these two here are pin oaks. As you can see, they're really, really exaggerated shape. They got these far elbows that cut in and the points on them they actually have little, really, really fine, almost hair-like points at the edge of each of their tips. This is a white oak, and it is the only oak species which has the rounded edges like this. It's got this really nice rounded edge that is a white oak. So you can see it's the same shape as the pin oak, except for the edges are rounded instead of being pointed. Very, very round and the elbows are far in. That's a white oak. I don't find as many white oak around. I don't know why. This is a black oak, which looks an awful lot like a pin oak. This is pin oak. This is black oak right here. Black oak. And as you can see, it's just the black oak looks almost exactly like the pin oak, except for the leaf itself is whiter. It still has the little fine you know, points on the end of the leaves. Also, on the black oak, aside from being wider than the pin oak, um, the very top, the points are, are smaller. So you can see here, this basically has your one central point and then three along the side on the pin oak. While the black oak has your central flanked by two little points and then two big points. Species doesn't matter. Just thought I'd tell you in case for some reason you're not sure if you would see this species. 
So that's black oak. And then I also have a red oak here, which is a very, very wide leaf. It almost doesn't look like an oak leaf at all. Um, but it's got a very similar shape. It's got a lot of points. And then the points got the really fine tip points on them. There is also a chestnut oak, which basically looks exactly like this, but the whole thing is rounded. So that one, uh, chestnut oak, just is skinnier at the bottom, wider at the top, but it's completely round, and I believe it's got a serrated edge. Any type of oak is fine. This is the preferred. If you can't find oak for some reason, it's a very popular tree, you probably can. I've read that a lot of people have had success feeding their millipedes on ash leaves. And this is an ash leaf. As you can see, it's a compound leaf. There's multiple leaflets on one stem. And this here is specifically a, I believe, a green ash. And the easiest way I found for telling this apart is they got one central big leaf here, and then it's got three pairs of leaves down the side. So it's got seven leaves total. Some species have four leaves down the side so that they have nine leaves total, counting the central tip. And the leaves tend to get smaller as they go down the leaflet. This uh, particular species has rounded edges on the leaves. And as you can see, it kind of comes out to a point. It's kind of an oval, sh rather of an oval shape. Um, the white oak looks almost exactly like this, except for the leaves are skinnier and the tip on it is much more pronounced. Like, it's, the tip on it is longer. And like I said, the leaves are thinner. And also, the back of the white oak is more of a silver and less of a pale green color. The black oak looks like this. Same arrangement of leaves, except for it has the four pair of leaflets down the side instead of three. And the leaves are serrated. They're the same shape as this, but the edges is serrated instead of smooth on the black ash. Um, there's also serrated ash, which has the serrated edge and has the same leaf arrangement. Any species of ash is fine. Again, oak has been found to be the preferred species, but a lot of people who have kept millipedes and centipedes have had a lot of success feeding them on ash, nothing but ash, and having them breed and survive their normal lifespan. So any of them is fine. Also, you can add some maple leaves in there. I like sneaking a few maple leaves into my mixture here and there because the maple is lighter. It decomposes much faster and they love decomposing material. These here are red maples and they kind of have a dark kind of reddish purple color to them and they got the basic maple leaf shape. This here is a sugar maple. A lot of you have probably seen the sugar maples. In the fall, they turn brilliant reds and oranges and yellows, kind of like this. There, I dropped one. Sorry about that. But they turn very pretty colors, the sugar maple. You can also use silver maple, which has the same basic shape of the maple, only it's got more points and the leaves aren't as wide. The individual points on the silver maple come in much deeper and it's got more points and these are kind of called silver maples because the back is this nice powdery silver color as you can see. That's how they got their name. Any species of maple is fine. It's not, maple is not a hardwood tree so I don't use a lot of them. I just maybe use one maple leaf about this size to ten oak leaves about this size. So it, I just mix it in there for a little bit of different flavor. It helps you get more quantity of leaves if you only have a couple of oak trees around. You can mix in all these different species, though it would be best that it would be prime that your mixture would be primarily oak or ash. Also, a note, a uh, quick note on the ash. In the fall, ash leaves turn a brilliant yellow, and their fruit or their leaves 
look like this. And they just hang off the tree in clumps. Probably not going to see it, but they get this little split tip. Kind of like a, kind of like the tip of a tongue. There, just a little, little split in the top. And then the ends are really long and thin. And they just hang out from the trees and in clumps, kind of like that. So if you're not sure if it's an ash tree, look for these things on the ground and stuff. Because if you got this, it's an ash tree. Be careful when picking your um, maple and your, your, sorry, your ash and your walnut because there's a tree that looks very similar that has a red stem. Make sure the leaves you are picking for ash or walnut have a green or a brown gray stem, not a red, reddish brown, kind of like a red clay colored stem because that has a different species of tree and I personally don't know if it would be safe for them to eat or not. So what do you do once you have your leaves and you've checked your leaves for bumps and things crawling on them and check for little fine raised black dots on your leaves, especially around the stem. Those are, uh, I believe, a type of egg or, or a type of feces from another bug. I don't leave those, but something like that. Don't be afraid if you see a leaf that's got something like that. You want to rub it off or it only has a couple of the brown dots on them. Just rip them off the leaf. If the rest of the leaf's fine, just rip off the area that's bad and use the rest of the leaf. Once you get them, stick them in a pan. Bake them for 200, at 250 degrees in your oven for at least 10 minutes. And then you want to crumble them up so you get a fine leaf litter like this. You can see it's not... I got bigger pieces, small pieces, and medium pieces, and a really, really, really fine dusting in the bottom. And this here is mostly oak with a little bit of maple mixed in. I haven't been able to find ash yet this year. I want to get some ash, but of course the fall is the best time to collect leaves for your pet and crumble them and bake them and just get as many as you can. You don't want to you don't want to run out. You can keep them in a mason jar or a Ziploc bag like this. And then you want to take your leaf litter once you got your nice damp wet soil mixture and you want to mix in leaves. You want about 30% or so leaves in your mixture. Because this is what they're going, your millipedes or centipedes or roaches or whatever are going to eat mainly is the leaves that are mixed into the soil and not the actual peat moss and coconut fiber itself. So you want a good quantity of leaves. And you want to mix it in. You don't want to just throw this, this crushed up leaf litter on the top because most of you know, millipedes and centipedes and whatnot you're going to get are going to burrow. They're going to enjoy burrowing in the substrate here and eating food. They're not going to want to come up to the surface all the time to find food to eat. So you want to make sure that is mixed in there as good as you have the coconut fiber mixed with the peat moss. So we're just going to mix that in there. You can also add bark, sorry not bark, uh, mulch in here. A lot of people add mulch to their mixture. Um, any kind of mulch that is untreated, it needs to be untreated with pesticides and everything. And you can just get that from any kind of basic plant store or plant nursery, you know, in garden center. Um, orchid bark is really good for that. Um, a lot of people I read that they prefer to use aspen bedding like is sold for reptiles and, you know, snakes specifically. A lot of people just, you know, take some of their aspen bedding chips and mix it into their substrate. You can get, you know, collect some mulch pieces outside or some small bark pieces off of your trees that have fallen. Bake that, stick that in there. I personally do not mix in mulch and bark pieces into my substrate because I had a lot of problems with it molding. And if it's molding, you know, since you probably shouldn't be digging up your pets all the time, it's not 
you're not going to know that it's molding and you don't want mold growing in your tank. It'll just take it over and then it will make your pet sick. Not good. Really not good. These leaves can be really hard to mix in here as you can see but I'm trying to get that in there. You can always, you know, just add more as you have to. But so you can see some leaves, some areas that's not mixed in the greatest, but there is quite a bit in there, especially if I pick it up, there's like leaves, leaves, leaves everywhere. So it's a really good mixture. I might mix it up better a little bit later before my millipede comes. Uh, I personally, like I said, I don't add mulch or bark mixed in here. If you want, you can. Orchid, a lot of people use aspen, like I said. Um, you could try cypress mulch. I think that would be okay. Um, do not use anything from evergreen trees. Very sappy and can make your animals sick. So do not use anything from an evergreen tree, a pine tree, or a hemlock tree. Nothing. Don't use the bark. Don't use the twigs. Don't put needles in there. Some people like to add little bunches of needles for decoration into their, their setup. Just don't use it. You're better off just not using it. And then my little millipede here, I got some, well, I don't have twigs that are going to fit. But I got some small leaves and some really tiny sized leaves that I can put in there for them to climb on. And I do have bark. And I'll give you a quick this here is oak bark. I'm pretty sure it's oak bark. It's either oak or maple. Either is fine. Any if you can feed the leaves to these guys, you can feed them the bark. And lichen is fine on the bark. It's just kind of like little white or green patches. That is fine. It's not going to hurt them. You just don't want any fuzzy mold or any fungus or, mar or mushrooms growing on it or anything like that. Make sure it doesn't have termites living in it. And again, you just bake this with the leaves at 250 degrees for at least 10 minutes and I absolutely love bark the guys love my millipedes seem to really love to chew on it and if you place it vertically like this it actually creates a climbing structure they can climb right up it vertically because of the texture they can grip into it they can get in behind it depending on uh, where you put it in the setup so it gives some nice climbing space for them so I really like using bark. You can place it flat down and make a hide out of it. Maybe make a little uh, entry hole so that they can actually, you know, get in there. They can't get to their hide. It would be bad. But they can burrow themselves so it's not like they can't find their way. And I have tons of bark. Tons and tons of bark. I don't have a twig small enough for them. Unless I cut this. I'd probably cut that. But bark. They really love bark. Really, really love their bark. Um, so this bark piece of bark here, which is thinner, I'm just gonna make it to fit my cup. And I can Push it, you can push it into the soil a bit. You can use this as climbing. You can use twigs off of any of the trees you get leaves from and use it to create a climbing structure. See? Climbing twig plus a vertical twig. And then add the leaf in here. Which I just kind of have over the bark a little bit so you can hide on the bark and behind the leaf creates a great hide plus the, it's food they can eat that as well they can climb under it climb on it so I just got that setting in there and then for water I did have there it is a cotton ball because my little tank for little one inch millipede is too small to put a water bowl in. 
but you can just use a bottle cap such as from Powerade or Gatorade or Lipton Tea. One of them that comes off pretty smooth. Maybe file down the edges a little bit so they don't get hurt. But since I don't have room for that, I'm just going to tear off a piece of cotton ball, wet it, stick it in here. And then um, the veggies, I do like to feed men to the veggies. I'll stick with something that is non-fruit that isn't going to rot. Something like lettuce or spinach or carrots. Non-fruit, something that isn't going to ferment. Keep it in a few days, take it out. Normally, I would suggest use a bowl. Use a bowl for that thing. You can feed them anything you want. You don't have to worry about it fermenting and the juices getting the soil and making it sour. And then you get flies in there and it's not cool. But, so that's going to be my baby millipede setup. That's how you mix the soil. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below the video and I will do my best to answer it. Thank you and good luck to everyone with their new pets. Hey YouTube, I am so forgetful, so here's a few last minute notes on mixing up a substrate for millipedes, centipedes, and other pet invertebrates which need an organic substrate. Leaves that you're using that should be um, brown, crispy, dry. You need them to be dead and decaying for these pets to be eating. If it's green and too moist, just don't worry, just leave it, don't use it. Um, you might see when you're getting them, depending on how fresh they are, they're dry, so they're crispy. They're kind of crunchy. If you pick them up and move them in your hands, they crinkle, they're kind of crunchy. Um, but if they're turning from their green color to the brown color, whatever color they are when they're dead, you may just see like splotches of green color or splotches of brown or like a black color as they're starting to decompose. That is fine. Use them. It's not going to cause any problems. Um, if you don't want to bake leaves or whatever it is you're using, you can also pour boiling water over them several times. But then you got to let them dry before you can crumble them up and make nice leaf litter out of them. It makes your life easier if they're if they are dry before they go in the oven and dry when they come out. Just crumble them up and you're done. So it's probably not a good time to go collecting leaves right after a rainstorm. It, it's crazy and kind of muddy and dirty and icky and fun and harder to get them nice and, and dry. If they're wet, you got to rip them, whereas if they're dry, you just crumble, 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 and you're done. So just a few last-minute tips, guys. See ya.